able to see smaller and smaller and smaller structure. You can see it starts off with this blob, and then there's a blob, there's another piece that's a part of this blob here, and it gets more and more resolved. Uh, I don't have a point, so we'll limit it. But so the idea is you go to higher frequencies and larger baselines, you get to look at smaller and smaller and smaller. So to go to small higher frequencies, you've got to get above the clouds. Millimeter astronomy gets affected by moisture in the air. And why we want to look at Kilimanjaro is because it's above 4,000 meters. So you can see, these are this is Nobiyama in Japan. This is the BLA. I did my PhD on this, this telescope here. I only got 13 hours of observing. And with that, I got a PhD, which is crazy. This is La Silla in Chile. Look at all the telescopes. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, another one here, 10. There's about 10 telescopes there. They've invested something like 10 or $15 billion in observatories on the Scylla, this area. And likewise, here's another group of telescopes. This is a billion dollars of telescopes. So this is a business. It's astronomy for me, but it's a business for the government of the US or whoever else. And in particular, China started off with, how many astronomers are there in, right now in Tanzania? Technically, you are an astronomer. So there's one, but you are, you're with me now, you're an astronomer. So there's one astronomer in Tanzania, okay? When Chile, when they first started building telescopes in Chile, they had four. Now they have a hundred. So in 40 years of investment, they went from four astronomers to a hundred. And that doesn't include, that just, that's just the number that have registered at the, uh, the International Astronomy Union. That's just the registered member. There will be another hundred that have graduated with PhDs or MSCs, etc., and go on. And by the way, an MSC or a BSc in astronomy is worth about as much as nothing. You've got to get a PhD. So please do not waste your time doing a BSc in astronomy. Always teach physics. Everybody in this room who does theoretical physics, does basic physics from first year university right through to fourth year university, it's always a much better grounding for an astronomer. I did not do astronomy in my undergraduate, I did physics, theoretical physics. It makes me a better astronomer because I understand the underlying physics and chemistry, okay? So please, do not start an astronomy program and give a BSc in astronomy. Do not do that, I, I beg you, please do not, okay? And a lot of universities around the world will do it and they love it, they think it's wonderful and they, they produce these wonderful young astronomers. They're not astronomers. They will never get a job in astronomy. You got a BSc, they can't even hire you at a bank. Remember, I teach bankers, right? So I try to convince people to go into banking. So if you teach astronomers in undergrad, I, they're no good to me, I can't make them bankers. So uh, please, don't do that. Anyways, but more importantly, the, most, the best site in the world for millimeter astronomy, because it's high and dry, is Chile, Atacama Desert. The Atacama Desert is 5,000 meters. And at 5,000 meters, how many people have climbed Kilimanjaro in this room? How many people have climbed Kilimanjaro? I did it a couple of years ago with my daughter. Have anybody, any of you guys climbed Kilimanjaro? Not a single person has climbed Kilimanjaro. The foreigner in the room has climbed Kilimanjaro. <laughs> And the problem is, it, you know, it can be expensive, it's difficult, and I understand all those things. And uh, I took my daughter up there, but I went up there specifically to look for astronomy sites. So to be honest, be fair, I'm like you guys, I would never have climbed it otherwise. I did it only because for astronomy purposes, I want to know what it looks like up there. I want to get a feel for observing on top of Kilimanjaro, if it was possible. So I went with my daughter, okay? So she and I climbed. She got, we both made it to the top. It was, it was a great experience. It's worth doing, really. It's worth doing. But I can't believe nobody is. Anyway. <laughs> but the point is, is that at 5,000 meters, you have trouble breathing. It's very hard. And, and most people who do astronomy come from sea level. They come from Dar es Salaam. And they come from England. You know, England is what? Plus one meter above sea level? I mean, I mean, the only thing bad about England is it's above sea level. Me, I wish it was below. Anyway, okay. So, 
The episode story is, you have 5,000 years, most of the astronomers live along the coast of the U.S. and in Europe and so on, and it's difficult. When they go to 5,000 meters, they have trouble breathing. So the whole observatory is largely made robotic. Okay? And when you do go up there, you're in pressurized vehicles, and you're kept in pressurized areas, and you carry art. They do lots of crazy stuff. When I worked in, at the LMT in Mexico, the large millimeter telescope, we worked at 4,500 meters. I would climb up there every other weekend. And I would, we would hike up there. No oxygen, no nothing. You just climb up the mountain, okay, we look around, yeah, we go here. You know? And you've got to get used to it. But you've got to get used to it. And it's really hard. And when I climbed Kilimanjaro, make no mistake, I wanted to quit many times. <laughs> it was very hard, but it was worth it. I got to see the sunrise, you know, it was beautiful. But that's why you build high altitude, no air, no moisture above your head, so it doesn't, add, it doesn't attenuate the signal from the stars. So when you want to do millimeter astronomy, we need to be above as much of the atmosphere as possible. So we've got to be at 4,000, 5,000 meters. That's our goal in life, is to get as high as possible. Otherwise, you want to go to satellites, go into space. Okay? The ultimate site for a telescope for millimeters is the moon. Okay? And I would be very happy to go to the moon. And I have friends that want me to go to the moon, but they don't want me to come back. <laughs> They're not really friends. But, okay. So here's, that's the site. And again, this is why it's all about atmospheric, right? So you, this is a, a map that measures transparency. So 100% transparency means here you can see, this is us looking with our naked eye, okay? We see the sun, today we don't, do we see the sun today? Why can't we see the sun? Clouds, right? Clouds, clouds attenuate the signal of the sun, we don't get to see it. The same is true in radio. If you have water molecules in the atmosphere, then we have attenuation of the radio signals. And that mostly affects, and you can see it here, right here is millimeter astronomy. You can see it doesn't actually get, it's not 100% transparent. So in order to do millimeter, we have to be above most of the atmosphere. So we've got to go high, very high, and very dry. And that's why we choose sites like the Mondra. Now, I've been asked to test three sites, and I'm working with Giorgi Giorg on the third site, which is Kilimanjaro. My colleagues who have asked me this have already decided they want to build on the Habsburg in Namibia, which is at 2,000 meters which is really stupid, because it's below most of the atmosphere. But for some reason, politically, they decided, hey, they own the mountain, it's owned by Max Planck in Germany, they can build it there, they think they're gonna get support from the SK project, all that stuff. But I have to convince them that they have to go to the better site. And these are examples of different, this is different quality of atmospheric observing on Hawaii. So just some ideas how we would do the measurements, but we're busy trying to put equipment up there to do these tests. Here's Kilimanjaro, here's the picture I took from Kilimanjaro when I was at Kibo Hut at 4,700 meters, looking back at Moenzi Peak. Here's Moenzi Peak here. Okay, here's the poor souls who are busy hiking to the spot that they're actually going home. And this was just before I had to climb. So now, I had enough energy to do these photographs. Because after I climbed, I was buggered. You know, I was tired, you know. It was, it was hectic, I got tired. Some guy kept saying, it's just there. So I go, shut up, shut up. You know, they kept, I don't know, they kept trying to convince you to keep moving. You're like, why, go away, leave me alone. Anyway, but well, what I want you to do is I want you to look at the, the picture on the left. Uh, this is the saddle on between Moenzi and Uhura Peak is here, and then look here, this is Alma. Do they look the same? Yeah, there, there's, no, there's no vegetation. There's no trees, there's no nothing, okay? Here, I used to work right there. I used to walk up there, 4,500 meters. There was no road when they built that telescope. I had to go, I just had to walk up the, uh, this, this area right here, you can walk up along the edge. It's the easiest way to go. But I would walk up there every couple of weeks, okay? It was, it was great fun, I loved it. But uh, this is Pico de Orosaba in the background. It's a volcano, it's a little bit active. This is Sierra Negra, it's a dormant volcano. Okay, and this is Hawaii. So this is Mauna Kea. And this is where they wanted to build that billion dollar telescope, but they didn't. But again, as I said, no trees, no trees, and no trees. You don't want to 
want any vegetation. You're up so high, there's no moisture, it doesn't rain. It rains here once every 10 years. In fact, people, they take their love, their deceased love, I hope it's deceased. Hold on, okay. They take their dead loved ones into the Atacama Desert and they bury them in shallow graves and they become mummies. Because it's so dry, the body, the cadaver, dries up. Now, I'm hoping they're dead before they get into the grave, but I'm pretty sure they are. Anyways, but it's a, a, rather, it's a rather sacred spot. And so that's how dry it is here. And this is, big, this is the best site in the world. And this telescope, which I think has 60-odd antennas, it, it's got to be worth a couple billion dollars. Again, very expensive to operate because you're at 5,000 meters. Very expensive to build, very expensive to operate. And the same would be true if we were to build up here on the saddle. I personally want to build up here. I want to go here. It's 5,150 meters. It'll become the highest observatory in the world. So, you know, it's always good to say we have the best, right? So if we build at the highest, we can now brag, no, 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 the highest observatory of the world is in Africa, it's in Tanzania. Okay, it's on Kilimanjaro. Not Kilimanjaro, Kenya, Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. Because many people think Kilimanjaro is in Kenya. I don't know why. In fact, even myself, they flew me to Kenya and then I flew to Kilimanjaro. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to, but that's how the tour operators did. I don't know why they did that. Now I know why. They don't want to give you guys any credit. And they want to decrease the economies around Tanzania. So. This is the data I've done for Kilimanjaro. And I want you to notice the Hounsberg, as I said, my colleagues want to build in Namibia. So look at the blue on the left. You see those big skyscrapers? That's bad. Because if you get a towel greater than 0.3 here, anything above 0.3, you get very poor observing. Above 1, you actually see nothing. You see absolutely nothing. You see, you see the cloud. So, for millimeter astronomy, and if we're working at the Humsburg, there will only be certain periods of the year here where you can do observing. Whereas the red is Kilimanjaro, you can see, even on its worst day, it's still less than one. It's still uh, able to do astronomy. And very likely, even on its worst day, let's say these days right here, there it is there, at 0.8, you actually are getting 0.5 because you get a diurnal effect, the daytime to nighttime. Uh, the warm air rises, right? So the warm air rises up the mountain, and at about six, seven, eight o'clock at night, you'll have a lot of moisture in the air, and then it clears up over the course of the evening. So by two, three in the morning, you can start observing. So even in the middle of the rainy season here, we likely have observable days of millimeter on Kilimanjaro. That is not true in Namibia. In Namibia, it will be bad. And I've tried to convince them, I've showed them this picture, they still don't listen because they're, they're still following the scientific method. Instrumental steps, remember? They believe they got to do things slowly, correctly, they're not thinking outside the box. The, the picture next to it on the right, the red is still Kilimanjaro and the black is Alma, the best site in the world. And you can see that Alma is down here. It's right there in most places. And then it's got these skyscrapers here that are about equal to Kilimanjaro, but basically it's down here. OMA is the gold standard. It is absolutely exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. There'll be very few sites in the world. There is no site in the world yet that we've found that's as good as OMA. And Kilimanjaro I don't think will be as good as, as OMA. However, if we go to 5,100 meters, I think we'll be getting even better. This was done for weather at 4,500 meters, okay? If you go to 5,000 meters, this thing will come down. It'll be coming down a lot closer to Alma. So if we were able to get onto the Moenzi Peak, we would probably have a site that's second